Hi folks, Paul Roberts here. We're going to continue on with our series of video fishing journals tracking the fall transition on a single water body, on what I'm calling our fall transition laboratory pond uh, for this year. This series kicks off with Journal 25 that describes what's happening in ponds and lakes during the fall transition. Journal 26 then took us out on the water at the peak of the early fall vegetation die-off and decomposition period. This one, Video Fishing Journal 27, is a mid-fall outing. It sees the, once again, changing water conditions, this time that follow that decomposition period. Water temperatures have eroded, now into the low 50s, as we've continued to rapidly lose sunlight, uh, the sun's angle and duration. Cold fronts contribute enormously to this heat loss, too. As I've said before, the transition seasons change in fits and starts. The slow march toward winter brought on by photoperiod change, resulting in the steady hemorrhaging of heat from our waters, what I call the slow bleed, that are then punctuated by the rapid heat losses from those wintry cold fronts. And our pond was hit with its first snowfall of the year just prior to this Journal 27 outing. Conditions for this outing saw 52 degree Fahrenheit water in the morning, uh, and, and that's top to bottom, uh, this pond being only five feet deep at its, its current base water level. By afternoon, core temps would peak at 53 Fahrenheit with a 56 degree Fahrenheit skin, surface skin. So as you can see, the core temperature, the vast majority of the water in that pond, is pretty stable gaining only a single degree over the course of the day. We can mostly blame the season's sun angle for this modest heating that we get now. Uh, water clarity has increased too, as all that organic material um, that had been loosened into the water column during die-off has nearly cleared. Clarity is not as high as it will get as the transition uh, progresses into winter, um, but um, it's a lot clearer than it was last trip. Okay, I need to quickly reintroduce our fall transition laboratory pond for this year uh, because each water body that we fish offers its own unique challenges. I'm keeping somewhat with our jungle warfare theme from this summer, uh, having chosen another heavily vegetated public pond for the fall transition. And uh, this one's an absolute dishpan, contour-wise. Uh, five feet deep across the entire basin, uh, the bottom almost entirely a carpet of dense coontail. I chose this challenging water type because these weedy, contourless waters can be a bit overwhelming for anglers, uh, since obvious bottom, bottom structural contours uh, that we learn to rely on to hold fish and, and help make them catchable are pretty much non-existent here. So how do bass without major contour changes operate? Such challenges require that we just look a little closer. What I'm looking for amidst this carpet of dense coontail are breaks in all that cover. There are reasons in many waters to separate the topographical structure of a lake bottom from its cover. But in heavily weeded dishpan waters, we need to consider the contour changes offered by the cover itself. Realize bass are not just relating to topographical structure alone, although it's so important because it broadly influences the ecological interactions that support life in a body of water. But bass are also object-oriented, which means that prominent objects of all types can attract and possibly hold them. Uh, see our The Nature of Fishing documentary on the development of behavior for an introduction to this concept. Um, and, and it's something we'll delve more deeply into in a coming documentary on the further development of behavior in adult bass. What we're looking for in these contourless waters then is areas with convoluted cover. 
um, what's called complex cover that offers safety and foraging opportunities for both prey and for bass. Uh, so you should also see Video Fishing Journal uh, 21 uh, for some of the details on, on why this is. In our dish pen contoured fall transition pond, complex cover in that wall-to-wall -wall carpet of weeds occurs where weed structure changes, especially where weeds form clumps and especially where they grow taller than the surrounding carpet. These are the places to search out. And we had found some of these areas during our initial explorations in our first uh, fall transition outing, uh, Journal 26. So for this mid-fall outing, I revisited those known complex cover areas we'd found, both in the main water body and along shorelines. Shorelines are food producers in any water body, so they, they shouldn't be ignored. Uh, in small waters in particular. In small waters, shorelines play a bigger role than they might on a large water body, especially in summer and winter when many bass gravitate to deeper main lake areas. This also occurs in small waters too, but in small waters the shorelines are simply close to the main body and so uh, often remain regularly visited year-round by bass as conditions and circumstances allow or even attract. One thing I want to call your attention to before we hit the water here uh, is the bass's rather rapid change in body condition as they go through the fall transition. This happens to give us a window into the underlying physiologic changes that bass undergo seasonally. Things that are foundational to what drives bass behavior in the first place and therefore how we anglers go about essentially meeting them where they're at. The bass we'd caught at the start of this series in Journal 26 were on the cusp of the summer to fall transition, and they were mostly on the thin side. Uh, not unhealthy, just a body condition that's pretty typical for mid to late summer bass in, in many if not most waters. And indeed, those bass of, of ours were just coming out of summer, with the fall transition just beginning to bear down on them. As we fish through the fall transition, however, we're going to see the body condition of our bass change. Uh, they're getting noticeably fatter. Bass appear to undergo a major metabolic shift during the fall. Uh, metabolism referring to the energetic balancing act that every life form must adapt to. Falling water temperatures undoubtedly play a key role, um, certainly with fish, uh, but it may also be deeper seated, in which energy expenditure is redirected from uh, motor activity, which is prioritized in summer, to fat assimilation that's prioritized, appears to be prioritized in fall, to inactivity that's prioritized in winter. Fat deposition appears to be a priority in the fall for two good reasons. Uh, fats, uh, lipids, are required for the production of reproductive tissues, and those tissues begin their development in the fall. That development is then interrupted for the duration of the winter until warming temperatures in spring fire, fire it back up again. Uh, maybe more immediately important, in terms of each individual survival and ability to be ready to meet the rigors of the spring spawn, is that fats are the energy reserves that serve as the first line of defense against the coming winter. While bass use inactivity as a, a response to winter cold, their basal metabolic processes, even at winter lows, are known to burn more energy than an inactive resting bass can often store up in reserves. If those fat reserves are depleted, the fish then begins burning its muscle tissue, and that's the sign of starvation. Thus, uh, some feeding during winter is often required for bass to make it through in good condition. So, we're already talking winter here. <laughs> well, we have to know where we're going if we want to know where we are. Uh, the natural world does not rest. There lies, I suspect, our need and powers to anticipate, to predict, to plan ahead. 
Uh, we anglers are often control freaks, and I argue we come by it honestly. Okay, presentation options. Keeping water temps in mind, uh, now in the low 50s, in my experience, uh, so far anyway, it's getting too cold for too much horizontal speed, such as consistent buzzbait, spinnerbait, crankbait, or topwater action. Uh, you know, most horizontal chuck and wine presentations. This may actually be the main reason why so many casual anglers bomb out when the water gets really cold. There are still better probability options out there. We can go down and get them, uh, root them out uh, of those breaks between uh, those clumps of convoluted vegetation, uh, fishing more vertically with, say, a, a jig or weighted soft plastic. This is particularly tough to do in this particular pond with its solid carpet of dense weeds. There are few breaks that cut much beyond the surface of the weeds, um, and those weeds, at top of those weeds, lie a mere three feet below a, a very clear water's surface. Uh, the few breaks that I, that, that I found that do cut deep uh, are just narrow slots. So without much real estate, good break real estate available, I didn't spend too much time with this. Uh, instead, I put my efforts into two other options. Target active fish holding above that carpet of weeds, uh, my main lure choice being jerkbaits, uh, and target shoreline-oriented bass. Um, bass attracted to shoreline cover, to heat, and the bluegills that are attracted to that heat. Uh, my main lure choices there being a swim jig and a soft jerk. Now, before I started fishing, um, in, in order to get a bead on, on the shoreline's potential, I did something I often do, and that's walk the bank trying to spot fish. Uh, I moved only a few bluegills and three smallish bass in, in doing this. One was in a south-facing, um, that's Incident Cove, one in just a foot of water beneath a small shoreline tree on an Incident Bank, gaining heat, uh, and, and one, a slightly better fish, that was in two feet of water on a non-incident bank, but one that was lined with large, prominent shoreline trees. Shoreline trees, by the way, count as cover, uh, something well worth remembering, uh, especially if you uh, fish uh, small waters or, or very shallow waters. On this outing, the immediate shallows um, on incident banks neared 60 degrees Fahrenheit. But unfortunately, there's precious little such real estate in this particular pond uh, because of its layout. Incident banks, those facing the southern sun, were limited in length and had gradual slopes with little substantial cover. Other water bodies are better laid out for, for this shoreline pattern to set up. Uh, and in fact, see uh, Video Fishing Journal 18 um, as, a, as an example. Okay, that's a scoop. I know it's a lot. If you've made it through, let's hit the water together and see what midfall brings in our the weedy fall transition pond. Uh, we've had some cold nights. We had our first snow. Um, and uh, it must have been a doozy because we've lost 15 degrees this month. It's in the low 50s. It's 52 degrees top to bottom here. <sighs> Which means we're sliding toward winter fast. Water clarity is its very clear. All that organic material has apparently been chowed, settled out, and uh, is essentially not in the water column now. This kind of clear water freaks me out because they can really see your lure from a distance. And um, it's, not, it's not convoluted. That all that coontail down there in Eladia is pretty flat, so I'm running a lure over. You know they can see it from a distance. And lures don't look like food most of the time. You got to surprise them, and if you have a convoluted bottom, structural makeup, it breaks up the the lure. Their ability to see the lure over any distance. This makes great darts and twists, but <laughs> it also makes these funny little glides 
or these little turns and uh, and sometimes just mechanical turns that don't look alive and don't look like the trigger that they might look for. But if they're surprised by it and it makes a couple of those darts, man, that's it. That's kind of the game. Whoops. Didn't stop that. Don't crash it. Whoa, I got a fish. I've got a fish. Got a nice one, too. And I spooked a carp. <laughs> or a uh, fish did. Oh, that's a good fish. Uh, now we got a trouble here, so let's uh, be careful. Keep it taut. Keep it taut on that fish. And bring her around. Don't jump again, honey. Yes, I thought you were gonna. <laughs> oh, and another one. And I got a hook there. There we go. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Honey, honey, I got a split thumb there. Look at this. Now, there we go. You're putting weight on already. I gotta catch a few more to know, but I suspect there's something physiologic going on there. Whoa, don't do that. Oh no. Get out of there. Oh no, 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 no. That hook in that gill. Come on. Come on out of there. That's a sharp little hook. Oh, man. <laughs> there we go. Now, walk it out of there. Oh, there. Shoo. Okay, look at that. Did you see that? Oh, we know there are ovaries developing. Okay? And... I was here a month ago and they were really thin. She's cold to the touch, very healthy. Um, it's hard to say if that's food. That's, that's ovaries too, because the swelling is on both sides, low like this. Stomach is just above it. But that stomach stretches, so. Anyway, very pretty, very pretty. Gorgeous, nice fish. She's pushing 17 inches, but she's really fat. Okay, hon. Adios. Ooh. She was pretty going down. That's a nice start. And she uh, took aggressively. What I mean by aggressively is I was letting the thing really dart. Not so many pauses. That must be the open water, because I'm, I'm not touching anything down there. Don't, I think I should get closer and find it. fish closer so I can detect. Okay, I'm touching stuff. There's a fish. Little one. No, not that little. He was just running toward me. Finally. <laughs> okay, what's your body condition, honey?
it's pretty darn good. Look at that. Look at that. All right, I need to catch some more to know, but... Oh, you're a pretty thing. Yes, you are a pretty thing. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. That, that's up front here, so that feels like food. Guys are getting fed now? Going to be short casts because of this wind and the amount of vegetation. Okay, you're going to have to get used to this. It's an X wrap, and they're they have such a sm the bill is very uh, sleek. Um, uh, with the body, there's no sharp angles, uh, so it's it's darn weedless. It fishes through weeds, darn surprisingly. Okay, we're gonna throw a crosswind once. A little break in the breeze here. Whoop! That's a fish. Right away. Oh. Took it almost as it landed. And that's in that clump, right in that clump. I got trebles here, so be careful. Whoa! Scooter. Single hook. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not under my boat. Sweet pea. There we go. Wrap up. That's what I need. Where is that hook? Gotcha. Yes. 17er. Cold to the touch. 50 degree water. And and yep, you're you're in nice shape there, honey. Long. She's gonna be just about 17, just shy, 16 and three quarter. I'm gonna say <laughs> you always gotta start knocking stuff off with you after you pull them out of the water, and. Ah, uh, you got food in you, hon. All right. See you later. Okay, so this is what I'd found back in September. There's a main weed clump right here. There's some major weed clumps. Okay, and these dishpan weedy waters. Um, one of the things you can do is head for the main weed clumps. Um, they tend to be grow tallest and therefore more convoluted versus a, a virtual carpet. It's easier for them to hunt in, easier for them to hide in, easier for your lures to look decent in. So I know that this, there's only a few remnants uh, there on the surface, a few leaves stuck in it, um, but I know where it is. And that's that slick that we took a picture of <laughs> that I pointed out and I can actually see the slick here um, uh, and, and more there so this is a made weed, main weed clump it's where I've been catching my big fish so short casts um, again they're right up shallow so she took it just after splashdown basically initial descent That's a fish. <laughs> and I can see him running. Holy moly, look at him go. All right, this is where I move to fish. Come on, stay down. 
<laughs> Ta-da! What do you know? <laughs> I'm laughing because I almost left. This was my spots I was going to hit. All right. He feels cold to me. Whoa, and you've got a belly on you too. You guys are fattening up. What's this? Is that fishing line? Or no, that's vegetation. You swallowed some, uh, what looks like Kara or something. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, there you go, hon. All right, well. Start like this. That's a fish. Yes, on the drop. Not a big one, but it was a fish on the drop off. It's a little dude. That's a great sign. And this is where the water's been blowing. So. Mm -mm. One out under the draw there. Let's get the stats out so I can get the right angle. That just makes it easy. Thin little guy. All right. So if the little dudes are hitting here, then you know that there's some heat here. Whoa, that was a bass, just came right out of that. Did you see that? Dang, how did I miss him? Come on. There he is, little tiny guy. <laughs> Darn, I thought that was my dude that chased, and it might have been. Hey, it's a bass. <laughs>